investing in AI. A lot of people right now are like, I know AI is huge. I know it's the most important part in the world for us economically. We're seeing these companies uh, from NVIDIA and Google and Microsoft and, uh, you know, dominate the stock market. Uh, and it's like, you know, if you look at if you look at these, co these companies as a percentage of the global GDP compared to other market sectors, they're massive. And so the question is, how does an investor think about it today? Where should they be putting their money? Um, do they continue to invest in the, in the giants or uh, are they overpriced? How, what's your, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm asking for investment advice, but how should someone think, how should <laughs> yeah. someone think about, mm -hmm. since your paper is about how to think about AI, how should they think about yeah. investing in AI? Yeah, it's, it's a separate thing, putting on my former hedge fund manager hat. Okay, um, let's do I, that. I mean, so look, I think that the first wave was kind of these NVIDIAs and kind of others. Uh, Microsoft and Google, et cetera, they're up like, what, 20, 30% over the last year, uh, maybe 50%. It's not a huge amount. They're in, li in line with market. NVIDIA has been the standout, you know, because they've established market dominance, they capitalized on it. But it's not expensive like Cisco was in the dot-com boom, for example, as an infrastructure provider on classical terms. But what I think is happening here is that we're going to have an overbuild, regardless, obviously we will, because they can't afford to underbuild. Mm -hmm. But then we move on to the application and implementation of this technology by centaurs. And so highly regulated industries or industries with pricing power that can replace rote human work with AI Atlantis has super normal margins. Yep. And then you see a margin expansion. The impact of this is how much will it cost to when we had cloud computing it reduced the cost of building a startup dramatically we we had to wire up our own servers and everything now you will have an ai agent in the box that can help you build a hairdressing business or a ai business or whatever almost there in the next few years you have this explosion of creativity ai enabled work i think is where you see this the most so pricing power is kind of one thing industries that can have this on the other side to increase their reach, so you increase your audience. Again, where if this business existed, I could apply a million graduates, mm -hmm. you know, liberal arts grads, and they'll be increasingly specialized. How does that impact? And that should be a framework for looking at the business opportunities of any stock. And again, regulated industries with pricing power are a fantastic place for that. You don't need the private equity to come in anymore and redo that. Do you, do you um, think then, the current? Yeah. Do you think the current uh, major players of Nvidia, Google, Microsoft are overvalued, or are they still have growth? On classical valuation terms, they are perfectly fine on valuation. And again, we're seeing continued growth, and it's not like it's crazy yet. Bubbles in the past, though, we've seen crazy. This is not crazy yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, you know, when you're valued by the number of eyeballs in the dot com bubble and things like that that we've seen. But this does point to something, which is. How much of the global economy will be AI? A lot. <laughs> As compared to where it, what it is today, which is still minuscule. Yes. Yeah. And again, if we compare it to even self-driving cars, you still need five, 10 times as much investment to catch up to self-driving cars versus model training.